Occasionally, some people around the world would publish some groundbreaking research papers, the kind of papers that would dictate where the entire direction the AI field will head towards. And with this Chinese AI company called DeepSeek, not only did they release a pivotal research paper that would probably change the course of AI development, but they also published their models free for everyone to download and use commercially, with the models now being arguably the best in the world. So you, me, and your friend Steve are all able to have a copy of this AI called a DeepSeek R1 that literally goes head to head with OpenAI's R1, which they charge 200 bucks a month, completely shattering the price of intelligence. It's like having your own PhD student that is on your computer working for free instead of in your basement. It's just that you probably need 16 RTX 3090s to technically run the best model for free that matches O1's performance. But don't worry, there are still smaller ones that are available for you and can fit into your computer. A good rule of thumb to know which model size you can run is by taking the model size and multiply it by 1.2. Then if your GPU VRAM or your unified RAM is bigger than this number, it usually means you can run the entire model. All you have to do to run it is to download Olama, open up a command prompt and type in Olama run DeepSeek R1 AB, wait, wait a bit harder, then whoa, it works in your terminal now. And congratulations, now you have a thinking AI model running for free on your computer. But why is this thinking process so much better than anything that anyone has published and is now making so much buzz? Well, for the entire time, OpenAI has had the secret sauce on the techniques of thinking models, aka test time compute, aka the strawberry, ever since they announced O1. And the performance increase is incredible. So the whole research world has been guessing and testing. And now with DeepC coming out on on top. And this is by no fluke either. So DeepSeek, which is founded by Liang Wenfeng, in an interview back in 2023 has shared some very interesting philosophies he has for running the company. First, that they look internally in China for young talents and young talents only. Because without experience, it also means that they don't have a preconceived bias, so everyone is willing to try a lot of new things. And when some very smart and adventurous researchers come together, brand new techniques were implemented and proposed, with all these being right on the mark, which are now all implemented into DeepSeek R1. Second, they are completely locked in on doing research. Unlike a lot of companies now are focusing on making one banger model, then making services to sell it, like now Anthropic might just be stuck giving compute to Cursor, they are focused in not getting distracted by side missions. It's just a straight line for them towards AGI. On top of that, they talk about how open sourcing for them is like giving back, which carries its own unique honor, and they believe they lose nothing by giving out weights and papers. What's even cooler is that their CEO states they will not close source like OpenAI as their CEO's main company is a quant firm that already provides enough funds and GPUs for DeepSeek. So DeepSeek's way of business is definitely going to disrupt the current commercial AI landscape. Like just look at their API pricing. Their latest model, DeepSeek R1, is sitting at 671 billion parameters with 37 billion active parameters, has literally the same performance with OpenAI's O1, but is 27 times cheaper. On top of that, the R1 model is open source under MIT license, which means anyone can use it commercially or distribute it and do whatever they want with it. This is a jailbreak prompt, don't quote me on it. But how did they achieve this? Their focus on innovative techniques in their older research like DeepSeek V2's MLA, DeepSeek MOE, and DeepSeek Math GRPO has paid off with the release of DeepSeek V3 one month ago, which combines the three and is now capable of hitting state of the art in the non-reasoning category, of course. And if you watched my last video, DeepSeek spent the same amount that OpenAI spent on running benchmarks for O3 to get DeepSeek V3, all while DeepSeek having no fancy hardware with only a tiny budget, which is absolute crazy. The reasoning model DeepSeek R1 is then built on top of V3, with the main takeaway that shook the whole world being, you just need to scale a reinforcement learning algorithm for test time compute. And for the rest of the complex reasoning behaviors, it will just all emerge itself if you scale the process large enough. So you can just toss the complex search methods or process rewarding out the window. Coincidentally, the day that R1 was released, that Trump was inaugurated, with some of the biggest tech CEO being there, and in the meantime, DeepSeek CEO is at a high profile meeting with a number two person in China, and at the same time, a research called Kimi K1.5 was also published, which completely backs up the idea proposed in the R1 paper. With them also being the sponsor for today, this is a great alternative if you like to have an AI to natively reason with images completely for free, which none other
others offer. Unlike OpenAI's O1, Kimi's K1.5 long thinking is capable of incorporating web search while reasoning with up to 1,000 sources and can process up to 50 documents at once. This is thanks to their super large 400k context window and their method of training RL natively at 128k tokens. So it can do some very serious long thinking that no other models can do. And with K1.5's vision that can reason natively, this means that you can attach images like math questions to help you explain the problems. One of my favorite ways to test this out is convert pictures of handwritten math formulas into LaTeX code. So if you're obsessed with nicely formatted equations, you can handwrite it, upload the image, and it'll generate the math codes for you. And thanks to the reasoning process, it even simplified the answer even more here from the image. With their approach of RL being very ambitious just like DeepSeek, I think their paper is also worth checking out, as K1.5 is better than the old O1 and comparable to the new O1 and DeepSeek. And definitely check out their web app with the link down in the description as it is completely free and like a very overpriced alternative. And thank you Kimi for sponsoring this video. Anyways, in DeepSeek R1's initial experiment, their RL algorithm, GRPO, only has two main goals, be accurate and follow the thinking tag structure. And contrary to standard practices, this RL is done before supervised fine tuning, which is the training process to make LLMs generate in specific formats for applications like chatbot. So they are doing RL on top of the base model that only knows how to do text completion. But this simple setup actually helped to bring RL to its fullest potential. Because throughout its training, the model with RL realizes that the longer the response it generates, the higher the accuracy is. So it slowly reinforces itself to generate a longer response. During this process, there are spontaneous emergence of sophisticated behaviors like self-reflection where the model re-evaluates its previous steps and exploration where the model would find alternative approaches to problem solving. As a result, all these behaviors emerged by having the RL simply interact with the environment freely. I don't know if you remember, but it's like that one OpenAI research where AI game agents found role bending exploits in the game to win, all through simple RL. And yeah, with only this method, they were already able to get performance near O1 level, and even reached what they called an aha moment where the model suddenly learns to allocate more thinking time to a problem by re-evaluating its initial approach. A lot of people are doubting this result, but I guess time will tell. And some researchers already replicated its results. And as beautiful as it is, this RL freedom actually still has a few downsides. It has a poor markdown formatting since only the thinking tag was reinforced during training, and it has another problem of language mixing during its thinking process because only the accuracy of the end result was rewarded, which makes it harder for people to understand the process. But the model slowly drifting to thinking in bilingual is indeed a really interesting observation. So this initial model is called the DeepSeek Zero. And to address these two problems, they had it to generate a bunch of reasoning tokens, manually modifying them, and built this new code star chain of thought data. What I think is really clever about this code star data is that it's based on a naturally emerged reasoning process, which should be optimal. So by modifying on top of this ensures that the reasoning data is staying as optimal as it can get. So when a fresh instance of the DeepSeek V3 base model is fine-tuned with this code start data, then during RL, it knows how to format the desired reasoning process that the researchers want, I understand it now. along with a new reward if the model uses consistent language. And after the RL, the model would undergo some pretty standard supervised fine-tuning, which is just to add capabilities like writing, role-playing, and other general purpose tasks. And this is how DeepSeek R1 is born. Research wise, none of these steps are super surprising, it's just that they have blended everything together perfectly to make such a good model that includes starting off from a very very capable model. And documenting all this is what makes this paper incredibly valuable. So there is only one DeepSeek R1 model, then what about the other smaller models we saw earlier on Olama? Those are distilled models, distilled meaning that they had DeepSeek R1 to generate samples that contains its reasoning process, then fine tune smaller models like Llama 3 8b and Quen 2.5 32b on the generated samples to replicate R1's reasoning process without needing to undergo RL themselves. And what's surprising is that the reasoning process actually gave the models an insane boost. It basically juiced out their performance using test time compute with the distilled Quen 32b winning O1 mini across the board other than coding. And that's really big news. Because with Quo and this distilled version both have the same base model, we can judge it fairly on the reasoning quality. The reasoning process that is distilled from DeepSea compared to what Quill has differs by 22.6% accuracy, which just shows how good the reasoning process DeepSeek has and how effective distilling the reasoning process is from a larger model. This is why OpenAI was doing 
everything they could to hide their chain of thought because from the look of this there is no moat in this paradigm at all so if you want to run it locally run either 14b or 32b since there is a very high chance of their first reply being very accurate as for the official benchmark for the r1 model is basically on par with 01 as for the third party benchmarks a lot of them are still not out yet for live bench which has the most diverse benchmarks it sits at number two for Ader benchmark that focuses on writing and editing codes it sits at number two for artificial analysis that measures model quality it sits at number two too and for a model that's 27 times cheaper than the number one model 01 i'm telling you the cost effectiveness is just mental on top of that you can use your website or app completely for free which is already catching up to ChatGPT on the app store ranking just gotta watch out for the doom loops and if you don't want to talk to a chatbot that's hosted in china then there are alternatives like open router hyperbolic or grok that will host their own copy of the model that is not in china and doesn't store your data but of course their api calls are not free anyways it's funny how america the land of the free doesn't have the best free to use model in the world maybe OpenAI will outcompete them by spending another few hundred billion and charging us 200 a month but if you enjoy cutting edge research like i do definitely check out my newsletter where i cover the latest in the juiciest research weekly through there you wouldn't have to wait for my videos because i am always late to the party on youtube and even so i don't really have the ability to cover every paper that i find interesting on youtube so definitely check out my newsletter if you don't want to miss out on the latest technical developments the ai field has to offer thank you for watching a big shout out to andrew laschelius chris ledoux degan miguelim robert zaviasa louis muck ben shaner marcelo ferreria and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.